Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 12 of the Lico Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. So I'm using this, uh, the, the laptop mic today because from yesterday, people tell me the sound is good. Uh, let me know if it's good. If you disagree, let me know and I'll take a look into it um, and maybe use my other thing. Um, I did some hiking today. If you follow me on Instagram, you you know, get some uh, catch up story. So let me know about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm in San Francisco this week, hence the setting in case you have been missing a couple of days. Uh, and I'll be in Atlanta later this week, uh, well, like on the weekend, maybe. And then maybe we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, today's first problem, or only problem, maybe, is 47 permutations 2. Given that a collection of numbers num that might contain duplicates, we turn all possible unique permutations in any order. So, um, oh, in any order, okay. So the first thing to notice is, well, there are a couple of things you should know. One is that, um, one is that it's always going to be some exponential e, or maybe even, I guess factorial is technically exponential, but uh, is that true? Hmm, like n to the n or something like that. Like n factorial is less than n to the n. But in any case, it goes way fast. Um, and knowing, noticing that eight is one of the, uh, I mean, I didn't. In a way, you know that the answer is going to have. And it's like as fast as it ticks, maybe you do like an O of N kind of like uh, 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 on top of it. So like if it's eight numbers, it's going to be eight factorial, maybe times eight if you do something funky, uh, maybe times 64, like eight square or something like that. By the way, you can't really optimize it that much because, well, because that's that's the size of the output, right? Like you can do faster than the size of the output because that's just like, you know, the lower bound, right? So yeah. And here, th that, that constraint doesn't really matter. But yeah, like I said, so I expect this to be exponential. I expect this to be a small number. I would be surprised if they give me a big number, but seeing that it, it is 8 confirms my uh, hypothesis. Um, and then now, I think th th this is, I wouldn't say it's tricky, tricky, but definitely is way easy to mess up. And I have almost certainly uh, messed this up in the past. Um, but the idea is just generating permutations in a way such that there's no um, duplicates, right? Because if all the numbers are unique, then you have this n factorial thing, and, you know, that's fine. So then the, the there is, like, I don't know if I could call it a trick, but just, like, an observation, maybe, that allows you to kind of write this recurs uh, The way that I usually do it is recursively. There's also, you can do it not recursively by treating it as a, as a, as a number of a different base, and then kind of, like, you know, get the next number in that way. And it's a little bit trickier to do it that way, though it is possible. And it is going to be... And it is something that comes into play if uh, in a different variation of the problem, which is, like, get the cave permutation, cave sorted perm permutation of a non-unique um, input, right? Like, uh, uh, an input that might contain duplicates. In that case that's when you need to do some uh, dynamic programming and things like that. Uh, we're not going to get into that that much because that's not this farm. This farm is more basic and we should be able to do it in a, in a recursive kind of way. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, so let's kind of get started. Hopefully I get it right in the first try. Because, um, but basically, yeah, let, let's see if this is okay first and then we'll see. And it seems like the theme, of course, of this week is just brute force or recursion or something like that. So yeah, so index current is what I always say. This is, uh, let's just say n is equal to length of nums. Um, and if n is, or if index is equal to n, then maybe we have an enter thing, uh, you know, enter that append current. Yeah, yeah, this is this is normal stuff that we've been actually all this week. Um, so it's the same idea. You make a copy of the current, you append it to answer. Yeah, and then next we go um so then the idea here is just um i don't even know if index is quite the right way to say it maybe i said it in a weird way hmm. let me think huh. i mean index comes up a lot but maybe this is actually the wrong way to do it 
Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess we want to write used, but not really. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think the first thing, and this is not necessarily sorted. So I think one thing that we also need to do is just add a sorting, so that gives us um, a sort of um, a sort of um, order, uh, like structure to the problem, right? I'm just. I think I for not gonna lie. I, I thought I did know this one better, but maybe I don't. So I'm just thinking it for a little bit. The number of the different ways that I can write this, and but how? So I think the idea is just. To, yeah. Okay. I think the idea is the same way as you write write a factorial one. Um, but first, we would have um, a used type thing. So that's actually, we could maybe, eh, we could put it in the recursion. We can have it not. That's fine either way, just because you would pass the same reference anyway. And that's the point of an internal function. Uh, I don't feel that bad about it, though. It doesn't really matter. But then, yeah. And then now we just do a for loop for, to get the next number, right? Um, I think index is a little bit awkward. I think... That's why I'm like struggling with this one. But what here is that length of current is equal to n. That means that we used all the numbers, right? So then now we go for i in range of n, and basically that. And I know this is going to be incorrect for now, but I'm just going to explain it this way. So bear with me a second if you already know ahead of time. But yeah, before i is equal to, to n. So then, and this is me just writing the normal n factorial one. And so basically we do a we. We do a maybe a u sub i is equal. Uh, well, we have to check, you know, if u sub i is not true, so we haven't used it yet. Then we set it to true. We set it to false. In between, we do a recursion on it, right? Uh, num sub i. Oops. Yeah, and of course this will. Oh, oops, this should be pop. Um, and let's run it real quick. I mean, like I said, I know this is. Not correct, but it's still becoming a not correct. It's nice to kind of see how not correct it is. Um, and the idea here is that for certain inputs, it'll be good. Um, maybe not these ones, but if, even if you do like one, two, three, four, five, six, so this will be good. It just doesn't handle duplicate numbers, right? Um, we'll see if that's actually true first. Um, yeah, so as I said. You know, like the second and the third, it should be okay. Well, maybe we can we see it, but it should be okay. But the first one, we don't handle duplicates. And it's kind of a weird trick, maybe. But the idea is that, I think the idea for me is, is kind of, um, you know, reducing the numbers that we can handle, right? So, for example, and what I mean by that is, and there are different representations of this, and you should feel free to try however you like. But for example, let's say you have... Um, Let's just say you have an array that is, you know, something like this, right? Uh, and we sorted it and so forth. But another way, instead of sorting it, is maybe putting on a counter map. And then the idea is that, okay, you have three ones, you have one, two, uh, two threes, and one four, right? And then the recursion in a brute force way is just taking one, one of the ones, or one of the twos, and one of the threes, or one of the fours, right? Like, you wouldn't double, you wouldn't say there's three ones, so let's try three times the next number being one because there's no distinctiveness, right? So you only try one, one. So you can definitely do it that way and then do a recursion in that way. Um, and that would be fine, to be honest, because num is equal to eight. So like the, the, the complexity is going to be the same. And that's basically the basis behind it, right? And you can implement that way with, the, with a counter. Um, a collection start counter or something like that, and it'll be fine. Um, not going to do it today, but or just uh, uh, that's not what I'm doing. But that'll be fine. Another way of kind of representing what we said is that said is that okay. Let's say this is one, and then the next number is a one. Well, we know that the two adjacent ones will give the exact same uh, suffix that gives us the permutation. So that means that if the the two numbers are adjacent. Um, then we don't have to use the second one, right? So that's basically the idea, is that if this is not used, and 
num sub i is not equal to num sub i minus one. We have to do some, you know, if statements, uh, additional if statements. Uh, if i minus one is greater than zero, and uh, or mm, uh, this is not true. Is I think this is. Uh, uh, so it is either that this is equal to zero or this then we are good um, but there's one more condition right because if the last number is used because if the last number is used you can use this number is what i'm trying to say um so i think that that is maybe more accurate uh, let's give it a quick spin uh, this is a little bit sketch we'll see if this is good uh okay maybe this maybe i did an extra condition Oh, oh, this is not and, this is or, because basically it's either, it's not the same, or it's used, whoops, very easy to mess up as you can see, and now this is um, distributive, so we can remove it, uh, okay, see, now it looks good, now, except for when I remove the parents, and then, you know, but yeah, uh, so this looks good, let's actually try, you know, like empty cases, oh, oh this one, I guess empty case is not a thing because this case is because we failed a reason one where the length is zero. So I'm just a little bit conscious about it. But this one seems okay. Yeah, and maybe we'll try just like one instance of max case just to see the speed a little bit. And then one like weird max case just to see. And let's give it a spin. Yeah, so it looks good. Let's give it a submit. And cool, 772 days. Nice. Um, it's a little bit slower than last time for whatever reason, but that's fine. Uh, let's see. What did I do last time? Yeah, okay. Well, actually, last time I did the thing where we where we talked about for counters. So either way is fine. Like I said, apparently that time that way is faster slightly. Uh, well, I don't think that's the reason, to be honest. I think it's just... Um, yeah, I think it's a little bit faster to do it this way versus all this pushing and used and popping. But maybe I'm wrong on that one. Um, that said, like I said, this is going to be exponential. It's going to be at, at all of n factorial um, because that's the worst case where n is at most 8. And 8 factorial is like what? I don't know. It's not that big, right? It's uh, 40,000, right? So that's good. Um, times 8 because, you know, but that's fine. Um, cool. That's all I have. For today's problem, let me know what you think. Also, the uh, the space, I forgot the space. Space is also 8 factorial times 8 or n factorial times n because there are n factorial elements or like number of entries and each of them has n elements, right? So n times n factorial. So yeah, um, cool. That's pretty much all I have. Let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health and wish me and my uh, stock market portfolio a little good luck. It's been a rough couple of weeks uh and your portfolio as well if you're you know suffering uh, anyway stay good stay healthy to commend to health i'll see you later and take care bye bye